So question six then from the 2022 Advanced Hire Paper 1. Four mark question. Proofs. Fairly straightforward question, as the rest have been so far. Part A. Consider the statement, for all odd numbers n, n squared plus 4 is prime. That means it won't divide by anything else apart from the number itself in 1. Find a counterexample to show the statement's false. Well, it shouldn't have said that. It should just have said, show the statement's false. And it was up to you to know that it would require a counterexample, and that would be sufficient to disprove it. Now, finding that counterexample's trivial. Nobody will fail to find a number you know, that proves that that isn't prime. But the mark's not really for that. The mark's for the precision with which you put down your answer. It has to be almost like a legal document covering all eventualities. So, the number. Well, you could either just start at 1, the first odd number, and it wouldn't take you long to get the answer. If it was further on and you were to apply a technique, you could say things like, well, what are the readily identifiable non-prime numbers, that is composite numbers, numbers that divide by something other than themselves? Well, you've got even numbers. Well, that's no use. Four's even, so that would have to be even. But the squares of odd numbers are all odd, so that's out. The next most readily identifiable one is a number that divides by five, because it ends in five. So you could say, well, if I've got four already, I require a square that ends in one. And then you can spot them straight away. Because you've got 81, you've got 121, and so on. But you wouldn't even need to go to that extent. You'd find the answer within a matter of seconds. That's how you write down the answer. So I would suggest this. Maybe a bit of overkill, but better safe than sorry, eh? The statement is false by counterexample n equals 9. Then, give the reason. Since n squared plus 4 equals, don't know if you can just put down 85 straight away or just put down the marking, 81 plus 4, which is 85. Oh, why did I miss that out for? Because I was just thinking of the 5 at the end, probably. That has to be there. That has to be there. Now, you also have to state that that's not a prime number. And 85 divides by 5, or maybe just show the factorisation of it, 5 times 17 divides by 5, don't know if you need to put this very last bit, and is not prime. Looks like an awful lot of writing. Again, that's probably overkill, but you do need to have these three parts in your answer. You'll have to give the counterexample and give the reason. So you have to give that result and indicate by whatever means that it's not prime. And then and only then would you get that mark. So part B then, for three marks this time, now this time you have to prove, prove directly that this statement is true. The difference between the cubes of any two consecutive integers is not divisible by three. Another thing to notice here is, in part A it introduced the variable n. Here it's not introduced any variables. So you'll have to introduce that yourself. That will have to be your first statement. If you're going to manipulate something, you need to have something to manipulate. So the first step would be this. Let n be a member of z, that's a set of integers, so that n and n plus 1 are consecutive. Now, just work with it. What does it say? The difference between the cubes of them. Well, n plus 1 is the larger, so n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed. What does that come to? Well, that's a binomial expansion. You should know the coefficients for that binomial expansion of power 3, 1, 3, 3, 1. If you don't, quickly write out Pascal's triangle. So n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 minus the n cubed. And I should have said at that point, so you've got two of the marks already. One for doing that thing you need to do, introducing the variable, making sure you've got the correct set, and then saying you've got the two consecutive parts, and the next part's for just doing what it says in the question, obtaining the difference in the cubes. I'm not sure how far you're meant to go. You're meant to go as, I would have thought you'd have to go as far as this, but I'll just put, I'll put it somewhere in the middle. Right, so that means the last mark's for showing it's not divisible by 3. Well, finish that off. Those get knocked out. You're left with 3n squared, which is divisible by 3, plus 3n, which is divisible by 3, plus 1, which isn't which means it's not, but you wouldn't just say that. You would clearly take out a common factor of 3. 
So taking out the 3, that's all you need to take out. 3 lots of n squared plus n, so that's clearly a multiple of 3. So that's clearly divisible by 3, but when you add 1 onto it, it's not. So now I can finish off by saying equals that, which is not divisible by 3. I'll make all the obvious statement, which is not divisible by 3. You have to be precise and explicit. Don't just leave it to the imagination. Don't just leave it there. And then leave it for whoever's reading it to interpret that that means that you state it, which is not divisible by 3. And perhaps for good measure, just throw in as well, which means that the statement, the statement is true, just for good measure. That's the last mark.